name, Allie from Little Hill Homestead. Today I'm bringing you something just a little bit different. You guys know we do a lot of cooking um, stuff right now because it's winter, but something else that I really love to do is sew. I do quilts and purses and different, I mean, basically anything I feel like sewing, I'll just sew. Um, but something that's super simple that I wanted to share with you guys because they're kind of blowing up right now are bowl covers. Um, they're super eco-friendly. They're reusable, you just throw them in the washing machine if they get dirty, and you can make them in so many sizes um, that you could have like eight of them for under 20 bucks probably in materials and just swap them between your different bowls. I love, this one's ginormous, but I love it because I use it on my sourdough um, as it's doing its stretch and folds and proofing and stuff. Sometimes I'll wet it so the dough doesn't stick to the back of it if it rises too high, but um, it dries right out. They're awesome. Anyways, if you would like to learn how to make a reusable bowl cover. Keep watching. All right, guys, what you need for this is either two fat quarters. These I got at um, Walmart. I think they were $1.60 each, um, or you can do a half of a yard of fabric if you don't want it to be, well, it'll still be reversible, but it'll just be one um, fabric. But basically you need like an 18 inch square to make this work. I have a 404 Pyrex bowl, that's the size that I'm going to make it for today, but you can use this method to make it for any bowl that you've got. So I just have a measuring tape. You want your elastic to kind of sit underneath the lip of your bowl. So what you're going to do is hold your measuring tape below that lip. I like to give it a little wiggle room, so I'm going to do a half inch below that lip. And then follow it all the way to the other side. So we're at 12 inches. But I like to give it enough um, extra coming down off the bottom to give it that ruffle that we look. So if we're at 12, I'm gonna go to 14 inches to make this really easy. You can do half inches and stuff, but for my purposes, I wanna be able to show you what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my square of fabric. Mine's a rectangle, but you can do it with an 18 inch square. You fold it in half, and then you're gonna fold it in half one more time the other way. Now. It's got that like funky raw edge. You don't want to include that. So I fold it just short of that. Okay. The corner where all of your fabrics are meeting, we're going to measure off of that corner. So for us, once you fold this out, it's going to double. So we want to go at half of your measurement. So if it was 14 inches, I'm going to do a half inch. I mean a half uh, measurement, which is seven inches. So I'm going to hold the zero on my, um, measuring tape at that corner. And I'm gonna mark whoop, out seven inches. I just, I'm using a pencil. I have um, some that are supposed to write on fabric. I don't feel like they do a very good job though. So I just use a little pencil. But basically I'm just gonna mark seven inches out. Whoop, all the way around so that you can connect them together to make a circle. I use a lot of my scrap fabrics from quilting and stuff to do this. Or if you find really good deals on um, fabric. Okay. So I don't know if you can really see it, but we have little marks. Let me see if I can bring you in to see it. We have very small little marks um, that trace this whole thing. Now, all you're gonna do is connect those marks together just so that you kind of know an eyeball of our circle. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but we have a hat, like a quarter of a circle basically traced out. I'm leaving a lot of scrap. I would not normally do that, but since I'm just doing a video for you guys, um, it is what it is. I'll probably use that to make a jar cover. So I'm gonna go right outside of our pencil line and just give it a cut. These are just some fabric scissors that I probably got, my son got them for me to be honest for Christmas last year. And then once you open it, you have a circle. So I'm gonna do that with my other piece of fabric and then I'll show you what's next. I'm gonna show you what I did on this one really quick. I folded it, but instead of pulling this all the way to the edge, I only folded it to here so that all this will be for a jar cover. Just saves all that fabric. But I still, I'm gonna have my seven inch circle on here. But I just want to share that with you so that I'm not wasting so much fabric. All right, I have our two circles now cut out and I'm going to put them with the pattern facing each other. 
and I don't pin because I'm lazy sometimes. Um, if you want to pin, you can just pin all the way around the circle. I just, um, there's enough friction between the fabrics that it holds them together. But I'm gonna take you now into my sewing room. All right guys, we're at my sewing machine now. What we are gonna do is just sew a circle around the outside of this. So I'm gonna set mine at a half inch seam allowance. You can do it whatever seam allowance you want. I'm gonna drop my foot. And if you're like a very beginner sewer, this is kind of an easier project. It's got a kind of different stuff that you're gonna learn, but it's okay. So on my, my reverse foot, let me show you, is right here. You're gonna use that a couple times. Okay, I got you set up again. Boom. All right, so we lined it up with our half inch little mark. And what you're gonna do is go forward a couple stitches and then backwards a couple stitches. And that's just gonna secure that edge so that it doesn't fray when we go to flip this back out. So you're just gonna follow it all the way around the circle. Just go at whatever speed you're comfy with. I got a new machine for Christmas. I've worked on a Viking, a Husqvarna Viking for like 25 years and I love it. But um, it was time for a new machine so I went with a Juki. And, and this thing can sew at an incredible rate of speed. I mean, I don't need to go that fast though. <laughs> And the biggest thing you're making sure is that both of your fabrics are lined up so you're catching both of them under the needle. Okay, our original sewing spot is right here. Oops, stop back so you can't see. You wanna stop shy of that so you can flip this inside out a little bit easier. And then you're gonna reverse it. Boop, okay, I'm gonna lift my needle up. And then you're just gonna cut your thread. That leaves a little pocket right here for you to be able to flip your fabric. So you're gonna fit, flip it, just by pushing it through. And then, um, it's like a whoopee cushion. <laughs> all right, and then I use my finger on where the seams are to kind of push it out so that it's, um, all your fabric you know is out of the inside. Thread is not, or my tension was not right. It's okay because it's on the inside, so you won't really see it, but it's fixed for when I do the outside. Okay, so now we have just these. I'm gonna go right here and do, um, I'm gonna iron it really quick. If you guys do a lot of sewing, I bought this at Home Depot. It's actually for like garden chemicals. It's just a pump sprayer, and I use it when I do a lot of ironing and quilting, and it has saved my arm. So I'm just gonna iron this, I'll be right back. All right. So what I'm gonna do now that I've ironed my circle is I'm gonna measure it side to side to see where we wanna sew our elastic. So I ended up at 13 and just over 13 inches. And like we wanted our um, bulk, the elastic to sit at 12 and a half. So we're gonna sew a half inch in from the edge all the way around in a circle. So, you can line it up with your needle and see where the half inch mark on your machine would be. My machine was not made in the US, so it doesn't have a half inch mark, but I have a little pencil mark that I've marked on here. So you're just gonna, oh, hold on, I almost did it. I do this all the time. You wanna find where that little pocket was that we created, um, where you flipped it, and sew from there. Don't sew from somewhere else or it's gonna be impossible to get the elastic in. So we're gonna find our little half inch mark, drop your foot. Same thing, you're gonna go forward a couple and backwards a couple. All right, and then you're just gonna do a circle around your entire thing at that half inch mark. It doesn't have to be perfect because once you put the elastic in and it bunches, you kind of can't tell if there's like little oopses. That's why this is a good beginner project. use my fingers pulling them towards me like this I guess they're walking um, that just keeps the circle spinning basically as your foot goes 
All right, and you're gonna pay attention. Our, our first stitch was here, and so we wanna do the same thing. You wanna leave a little bit of a gap. Nope, not on this one, that's for jar cover. You wanna meet, go all the way to it. But you want them to line up, so kind of pay attention to where it is. And when you hit it, go over it like one, two stitches, and then back stitch twice. Boom. All right, needles up. And trim all your little uh, threads, you guys. I just like to trim as I go so your project's not so messy. So now we are ready for our elastic, but we need, what we need to do is measure how much we need on our bowl. So what I do, I have my bowl right here. I'm gonna see if I can do this for you guys. <clears throat> Actually, I'm not gonna use measuring tape. I'm gonna, <laughs> you think I'd know what I'm doing. I'm gonna just take some elastic. I'm gonna do a half measurement of my bowl and kind of tighten my elastic. It's really hard to get it to go the full way around a glass bowl without it slipping. So I do a half. So I kind of just line it to the top and then pull to where I'm like, okay, that would stay put. Boom. Hold that with your finger. And then what we're gonna do is fold your elastic in half at that point, And that's where you're gonna cut your elastic. You can use any width elastic. I have I had a thicker one just in my drawer. Um, you can use the regular old skinny stuff or whatever you got. Okay. Now to thread that through your channel, I use a bobby pin. These are not bobby pins, these are safety pins. Bobby pin would not work. You can use these little, um, where's the little tool? I have a little pocket of tools that I keep hanging over here. and it's stuck on something. You can use one of these as well. I find it's really hard to get all the way around the circle without it bending and snapping. Um, if you figure it out, let me know, but this is just the easiest way for me. So you're going to find that little hole and you're going to push the safety pin in and then I just kind of use, you bunch it and the safety pin is in our fabric right now as a guide and you just pull. And you're going to do that until you get all the way around to the other side where it came, it comes back out. Now, one thing you gotta think about is your elastic is pulled a little bit tight. And so you don't want it to pull in this hole. And so as it gets closer and closer to that point, I usually put a little quilter's clip on it or you can safety pin it as well, just so that it doesn't um, pull in. This part is, I mean, it's not easy, it's just, it's not easy. It is easy. It just takes a second. <laughs> We're about halfway right now. I guess I could have shut you guys off, but I wanted to just see real time how long this takes because um, it's really an easier. Almost there, you guys. Now, mine left a big string at the end, so I ended up not having to clip it. When I do the jar covers, you don't have as much wiggle room, and so those you do have to clip it. But here, we're gonna be okay. Okay, we're to the end. So I'm gonna pull our elastic out, and I'm gonna remove that little pin. So you're gonna find both ends of your elastic, I usually just pull this tight so I have some room to work here. And you're gonna lay these flat together and stitch over the top and back a couple times just to hold your elastic. This really secures it so you don't have any issues. I just go, I don't know, what was that, 18 times? No, I'm just kidding, it was like four, five, six. A couple times, and then you're just gonna clip your strings. Okay. So now we're gonna pull the bunching to pull that elastic back into our bowl cover. And you kinda of have to stretch it a little bit, but it eventually will just pop into place. Like that. So what I like to do, I should have done this before I sewed it, my bad, is I like to test it on my bowl to make sure it's gonna fit. So let me grab my bowl. 
You just don't want it to be so loose that it actually doesn't stay in place, so. Nope, we're good, it fits perfectly. If it was a little bit loose, you would just um, sew a little bit farther in on that elastic. All right, so um, when I ironed mine, I tucked the fabric under the tiniest little bit here when I ironed it so that when we sew this shut, it will stay, um, it'll look secure. All right, so we need to sh sew this little thing closed right here. And that will be it for our bowl cover. If you want to go all the way around the circle to make it look just finished completely, you totally can. I just go as close to the edge as I can and then just move my foot back and forth a couple times. So that is pretty much it. I'm gonna go around the edge because I do think it looks just a little bit cleaner. I just pull it tight and let it go. It just gives you a little extra oomph. I really like to do this on the jar covers because it's a little more obvious because of the ruffle that they end up with. I'm like making it so you can't even see. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't have an exact measurement. I just get as close to the edge as I can without missing it. Just pull it tight as you go. We're almost there. And then once you get to where your thread started originally, just backtrack a little bit. Lift up your needle. And my clippers are over here. <laughs> and just clip your threads. So we're just going to clean up those little threads that we had. All of our threads are cleaned up. There you go. All right, I'm going to take you in the kitchen and show you the finished product. All right, we're back in the kitchen. I have my bowl cover that we just finished sewing and I brought my bowl in here just so I can show you guys. Like I said, the glass is slippery, so sometimes it, it's a little bit of a pain. I like to just have something to push against it so that it stays in place. But, okay, you see it has just a little bit of a ripple from where the elastic is. We've got our, um, stitch here. Our, our elastic is in this channel and then I have the finished stitch here. And it is totally reversible. You just flip it over. And the nice part, <laughs> I told you they're slippery so I have to push them against my body to get them to stay on. But that's it. Um, let me show you. On, like this one is not going to fit on here because the elastic is not meant to be. Like it'll fit a little bit but um it's okay. If you had something in there you want to just keep covered, it's fine. But um, you can make them all different sizes. So just remember to measure across the top, add a couple inches so that you have plenty of room for your sewing um, seam allowances and stuff. But that's our finished product, you guys. Isn't it too cute? And it's just crazy to me because what did that take us? Maybe 10 minutes total? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes total, you guys. This should be simpler than, I mean, it shouldn't be simpler than this. You want it to be tight, but it's because I'm trying to film at the same time. Um, yeah, so aren't they cute? It's so festive. Think of like 4th July picnic and you've got these outside. And Anyways, thank you so much for watching my crazy shenanigans. I hope you guys make a, a bowl cover and keep watching. Um, I'm going to be posting as well a jar cover for... Your sourdough, let me go there, grab my sourdough. I'm gonna take you around my house with me. Whoop. This is our sourdough Vinny. I'm gonna show you how to wanna make one of these as well in a different video. I was gonna do them together, but it just got too long. Anyways, bowl cover, awesome, super sustainable, pretty dang easy, and I hope you guys make one. Thanks for watching.